Okay, we're in chapter one on the whole numbers. This is section 1.5, order of operations. So with all arithmetic operations, we must follow a standard order of operations to get the correct answer. And the normal one that we use is called PEMDAS. That's the easiest way to remember it. And basically we're gonna use parentheses or other grouping symbol and sides are done first and then you work your way outside. Then following that, we do the exponents. So if we have some parentheses to some power, we simplify it inside of parentheses and then we raise it to that power. And then we have multiplication and division. So we're gonna work through these left to right. Okay. And multiplication doesn't matter, but that division does. And so we have to work through all the multiplication and division from left to right, and then we should get the correct answer. Following that, we're gonna do the addition and subtraction, also work through left to right. Okay. And this just ensures that we don't uh, do any subtraction in the wrong order or any division in the wrong order, because those two really, the order does matter. Multiplication and addition, they don't, but because of the other two that do, we really have to follow this in order from left to right. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna practice evaluating things and following the PEMDAS rules and, and see what kind of answers we get. So it says just evaluate. And so when we see that, we have to look at the problem. In this case, it says five plus three times four. Well, what do we know about PEMDAS? Well, PEMDAS says, well, let's go ahead and write that up at the top here. It says parentheses, nope, we don't have any of those. Exponents, no. Uh, multiplication, yeah, we have a multiplication. We have three times four, so we'll do that first. So three times four was what, 12. And we still have five plus. And then the only thing left is addition. Well, that's gonna be their last thing we do. So five plus 12 is what? Well, that's equal to 17. All right, so the next one. We have a division followed by a multiplication. Well, multiplication and division, remember, those go from left to right. So we're just gonna go first, 63 divided by nine, okay? Well, 63 divided by nine is going to be seven times four. We still have that times four. Well, it's seven times four. Well, that's equal to 28, okay? On the next one, we have a multiplication, we have an exponent, and we have a subtraction. Well, exponent becomes comes before multiplication, and that for sure comes before subtraction. So what we're gonna do first is this exponent. So we'll have three times two cubed. Well, remember two cubed is just two times two times two, which is two times two is four times two is eight. So that just gives us an eight there and then subtract eight after that. So now we've got a multiplication and a subtraction. So we'll do the multiplication first. So that's 24 minus eight. Well, 24 minus eight is gonna give us 16, okay? Again, following orders of operations. So exponents followed by multiplication, followed by the subtraction. All right, so what about this one? Well, if we go ahead and write our PEMDAS up here again so we don't forget it. We have an addition. This is considered multiplication, three parentheses, that would be multiplication. We have an addition, a multiplication, and an exponent. All right, well, parentheses, that means we're gonna do what's inside of here first. So, so this whole thing is first. And then after that, it's gonna be the exponents. And then after that, we'll do a multiplication. And then after that, we'll do the addition. But first inside here, well, we have two plus five times two. Well, five times two comes first. So we'll have two plus 10, because five times two is 10. Two plus 10 is 12. And so now we've finalized everything inside of parentheses. Now we'll write everything else that's still there. Okay, so all we did is just worked inside of here until we got down to 12, and then we added everything that was still there back. Now we've got an exponent, so we have to do the exponent next. So 12 squ <coughs> squared just is 12 times 12. Well, that's gonna give us 144. So rewriting this, we get 14 plus three times 
144. Well, now we've got a multiplication and an addition. So now we're going to take 144 times 3. So 3 times 4 is 12, carry 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, carry 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So we get now 14 plus 4, 32. <coughs> Now what do we do? Well, now we just add. So I'm going to go and say, well, here's my 432, and I'm going to add to that 14. So 4 plus 2 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 0 is 4, and so I get then 4, 4, 6 as my final answer. All right, so the next one, it looks like we have a division because we have the fraction. We have some exponents. We have an addition and more exponents, parentheses. So we're going to have to kind of work through this in, in kind of pieces. So if we look at the numerator and denominator as two separate parts, and then we do the division at the very end, I think that's going to be the easiest way. So in the numerator, we have a 5 squared plus a 4 squared. Well, that has an exponent, that has an exponent. So let's take and do those exponents first. So 5 squared means 5 times 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. And then we still have that plus. Now we have 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So the numerator, we've simplified, got rid of exponents, and now we just have the addition. So now let's look at the denominator. Well, the denominator, let's kind of do it in two pieces here. Well, here we have 7 plus 1, so that's in parentheses. 7 plus 1 is what? Well, that's 8 squared. And so now 8 times 8, which is 64, okay? So now we have an addition and then a division, basically. So 25 plus 16. Now, again, if you can't do that in your head, you can write it over on the side and say 25 plus 16. So 5 plus 6 is 11. 2 plus 2 is going to be 4. So that's going to give me 41 over 64. Now, this is not going to be a whole number, and we're, we haven't really dealt with the decimals of dividing out long numbers yet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, that's as far as we're going to go at this point in time because we don't have a whole number, and so we'll just stop with the whole number divided by a whole number, and that will be our final solution to this problem. We simplified the exponents, the addition, the parentheses, and another exponent, and we've got down to just the fraction 41 over 64. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing is called the distributive property, and that basically is going to let us simplify things like the A times B plus C. And so we're going to let A, B, and C be any whole numbers. It doesn't matter what they are. And then we're going to say, well, A times this is equal to that. And how are we getting that? Well, we're taking A times B, and then we're going to take A times C, and we're going to add. So A times B is AB plus, then plus, and then A times C is AC. So that gives us AB plus AC. And so that's how we can simplify things. And this is really going to come into play a lot when you get into the algebra parts where we have, you know, maybe X plus 4, and it's all times a 3, okay? And then we can simplify that down into 3X, and then 3 times 4 is 12, so plus 12. So it's going to make things simpler then. Now, it not always is going to help because right now we're going to be working with whole numbers. And sometimes it's easier to do that subtraction first and then do the multiplication. But they're going to ask us to do the distribution, and that's, that's fine as well. And it works the same here. We're going to take A times B, and we get AB. And then we're going to subtract this time, and then we're going to take A times C and get AC. So notice it works for both addition and subtraction within the parentheses. It doesn't matter what's in here. You just distribute that A over both of them and be sure to keep your proper sign. Now we could have had a B plus C plus D plus E and we just keep distributing further and further out and we would just have more terms here in our final uh, output here once we've distributed. Okay. So now we want to evaluate with the distributive property. It doesn't say do uh, order of operations. It says distributive property. So that means we're going to take 4 times 6 and 4 times 9, and we're going to add them together. Well, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 4 times 9 is 36. And again, if we need to, we can take 24 plus 
36, and 4 and 6 is 10, and 3 plus 3 is 6, and so we get 60, okay? Now, could we have done that a different way? Well, yeah, we could have taken 6 plus 9 and got 15, and then we'd have 4 times 15. Well, again, if we need to multiply like this, that's fine. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 60, and we get the same answer. So we can do the distribution, or we can do order of operations, and either way, we get the same answer of 60. Okay. Now the next one, we can see that if we take 7 minus 5, that's 2 times 3 is 6, and that's going to be pretty quick as far as getting an answer. But we want to do the distribution way first. So we're going to take 3 times 7, we're going to get 21, minus 3 times 5 is 15, and 21 minus 15, and again, if you need to, we can put these on here like this and do the subtraction. Now this one we need to borrow, and so we'll have to borrow, make that a 1, and that's 11. And so now we have 11 minus 5 is 6, and that would be our solution. And remember, when we did 7 minus 5, that was 2 times 3 was 6. And so order of operations and the distribution both come up with the same answer. Okay. Now this was a, a short section, so that's all we have for the actual lecture. And what I'll do is I'll come back here with some example problems.